one so confused. They are somehow brilliant. Musings of L on the first of the final ten days. Paladin <laughs> jolted, opening his eyes in confusion. He was in a small tent. What on Roshar? He blinked and sat up. He found himself beside a boy, maybe 11 or 12 years old, in an antiquated uniform. A leather skirt and cap. Kaladin was dressed similarly. What do you think, Dem? Should we run? Kaladin scanned the small tent, baffled. Then he heard sounds outside. A battlefield? He stood up and stepped out into the light, leaping against it. This isn't the Shattered Plains. He was on a hillside with some stumpway trees on it. I know this place. Amaram's colors, men in leather armor. Storms. Kaladin was on a battlefield from his youth. The exhaustion had taken a toll on him. I'm hallucinating. The surgeon in him was worried at that. A young squad leader walked up, haggard, a shorter soldier beside him. Storms. He can't be older than 17 or 18. That seemed so young to Kaladin now. Though he wasn't that much older. We can't hold. It's impossible. Storms, they're gathering for another advance. The orders are clear. Bright Lord Sheila says we're to hold here. No retreat. <sighs> it's a damnation with that man. Kaladin immediately felt a kinship with the poor fool. Given impossible orders and not enough resources, looking along the ragged battle line, Kaladin guessed the man was in over his head. With all the higher-ranked soldiers dead, there were barely enough men to form three squads. And half of those were wounded. This is Amaram's fault. Playing with the lives of half-trained men in outdated equipment. All to make himself look good so he'll get moved to the Shattered Plains. You shouldn't talk like that, kid. It could get you strung up if the High Marshal hears. <sighs> Form up the wounded men on that flank. Tell everyone to get ready to hold. And you, messenger boy, grab your friend and get some spears. Gore, put them in front. In front? A certain mark? Uh, you work with what you have. The man hiked back the way he had come. Work with what you have. Everything spun around Kaladin, and he suddenly remembered this exact battlefield. He knew where he was. He knew that squad leader's face. How didn't I see this immediately? I've been here. Rushing through the line, searching for... Searching for... He spun on his heel and found a young man, too young, approaching Varth. He had an open, inviting face and too much spring in his step as he approached the squad leader. I'll go with them, sir. Fine, go. Tien picked up a spear. He gathered the other messenger boy from the tent and started toward the place where he'd been told to stand. No, Tien. I can't watch this. Not again. Tien came back and took Kaladin's hand, then walked him forward. It's all right, I know you're frightened. But here... We can stand together. All of us. Three are stronger than one, right? Tien held out his spear, and the other boy, who was crying, did the same. Tien, why did you do it? You should have stayed safe. They would have been alone. They needed someone to help them feel brave. They were slaughtered. So were you. So it was good someone was there to help them not feel so alone as it happened. You were terrified. I saw your eyes. Of course I was. Who wouldn't be afraid? Doesn't change that I needed to be here. For them. Kaladin remembered getting stabbed on this battlefield, killing a man, then being forced to watch Tien die. He cringed, anticipating that death. But all went dark. The forest, the tent, the figures all vanished. Except for Tien. <laughs> Kaladin fell to his knees. Then Tien... Poor little Tien wrapped his arms around Kaladin and held him. It's all right. I'm here to help you feel brave. I'm not the child you see. I know who you are, Cal. Kaladin looked up at his brother, who somehow in that moment was full grown. And Kaladin was a child clinging to him, <laughs> holding to him as the tears started to fall as he let himself weep at Teft's death. This is wrong. I'm supposed to hold you, protect you. And you did, as I helped you. Tien pulled Kaladin tight. Why do we fight, Cal? Why do we keep going? I don't know. 
I've forgotten. It's so we can be with each other. They all die, dear. Everyone dies. So they do, don't they? That means it doesn't matter. None of it matters. See, that's the wrong way of looking at it. Since we all go to the same place in the end, the moments we spent with each other are the only things that do matter. The times we helped each other. Kaladin trembled. <laughs> Look at it, Cal. See the colors. If you think letting Teft die is a failure, but all the times you supported him are meaningless, then no wonder it always hurts. Instead, if you think how lucky you both were to be able to help each other when you were together, well, it, it looks a lot nicer, doesn't it? I'm not strong enough. You're strong enough for me. I'm not good enough. You're good enough for me. I wouldn't live. Tien smiled. You are here for me, Cal. You're here for all of us. And if I fail again? You can't, so long as you understand. He pulled Kaladin tight. Kaladin rested his head against Tien's chest, blotting his tears with the cloth of his shirt. Teft believes in you. The enemy thinks he's won, but I want to see his face when he realizes the truth. Don't you? It's going to be delightful. Kaladin found himself smiling. If he kills us, he simply dropped us off at a place we were going anyway. We shouldn't hasten it. And it is sad. But see, he can't take our moments, our connection, Kaladin. And those are the things that really matter. Kaladin closed his eyes, letting himself enjoy this moment. Is it real? Are you real? Or is this something made by the Stormfather? A wit? Or someone else? Tien smiled, then pressed something into Kaladin's hand. A small, wooden horse. Try to keep track of him this time, Cal. I worked hard on that. Kaladin dropped suddenly, the wooden horse evaporating in his hand as he fell. He searched around in the endless blackness. Sil! A pinprick of light weaving around him. That isn't her. Sil! Another pinprick, and another. Those weren't her. But that is! Kaladin reached into the darkness and seized her hand, pulling her to him. She grabbed him, physical in this place and his own size. Sil shook. I've forgotten the words. I'm supposed to help you, but I can't think. You are helping. By being here. Kaladin closed his eyes, feeling the storm as they broke through the moment between, and entered the real world. Besides, I know the words. Say them. I have always known these words. Say it, lad. Do it. I accept, Stormfather. I accept that there will be those I cannot protect! Kaladin felt warmth surrounding him, light infusing him. <gasps> he heard a familiar voice, not the Stormfather's, and the voice said, These words are accepted. We couldn't save Teft, Silla. We couldn't save Tien. But we can save my father. And when he opened his eyes, the sky exploded with a thousand pure lights. 